This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to show you how you can dynamically capture and display to your user the flag of their country from which they are browsing your application from, or potentially just show a list of country flags as you may decide to provide to your users some selections to make choices from. Now, what we have here in this repeating group is a set of options that are our, our countries. And then inside of it, we have the image element that is set up to be dynamic and capture the option sets country code. And this one, we have the image element, and this is actually using the uh, current user's browser's geolocation based off of their IP address to capture the country code from which they're accessing your application from and displaying that to them. So various ways that you can end up showing the user the sort of flag that you want them to see. But let's get into the editor and see how we set up that image element. Now, before going into the image element, just to talk about how we're capturing the user's geolocation information based off of just their IP address, inside of this application, I have a plugin that's called IP Geolocation. And this is a plugin by uh, zero code. It's a free plugin that they put out. So you can go ahead and install that in the uh, bubble marketplace for plugins. And then once you have that installed, you can place a geolocation. I just type in IP geolocation and then drag that out onto your page. Now, this is the type of element. It's not visible on the page, but it will probably interfere with your responsive design. So it is something that you want to have out of the way uh, when you're actually implementing this into your own application. The documentation tells you right here that you need to set it to IP geolocation. So we can just come down and see this response IP geolocation. Once you have it on the page, then you're going to be able to access the data from there through dynamic expressions. So I have a text element just to do this as an example here. If I say insert dynamic data, I can then choose the IP geolocation and then data. And then after that, I have a lot of different type of information. So this is a, a useful uh, sort of plug-in for various reasons. But right now, we're just trying to get the country code out, and that's it. Okay. So inside of the image element, to be able to do this in such a way that it's dynamic, we are taking the static value that we have here for the countryflags.io. And then after the backslash, we're using that dynamic expression to get the IP geolocations data's country code. And then we use a backslash and we're putting in there the drop down styles value. And what this is, is the drop down has two different styles. That's the two different styles that are uh, available through this setup. And that is either flat or shiny. So if, if you don't want to have it you know, dynamic, you could just put in the static value of either flat or shiny, whichever one you're choosing. And then after the backslash, the 64 is supposed to represent the size. And so you can play around with that sizing and see which works well for you. Now, to do this sort of dynamic setup where we have this repeating group, we have this option set inside of the database called uh, country codes. And so you can add to this if you wanted to add the country name and things like that. But essentially, this here is just going to take the country code as the display value. And so when we set up this repeating group, we're just doing the data source as all option country codes. And then we have an image element inside of it. And again, it's using the static value for that countryflags.io. And then the dynamic value here is representing the current cells options country codes display. And then we have, again, the backslash with the drop down style value for either flat or shiny. And then again, the backslash with the 64 for the sizing. So if we take a look again at this in the preview mode, we'll see how when we make a change with that dropdown, right now everything is being in the shiny. If we put it to flat, you can see how they change. So you can get a sense as to which one you would rather implement within your own application. Uh, but back in the editor, 
that is all we need to do to be able to get the flag to display to our user based off of one, either a IP address from which they are actually accessing our application from, or two, in a repeating group to be able to display to them a list of choices. So hopefully this helps you out if you're gonna be implementing a setup in which you're gonna have different types of languages that users can choose from, you know, this is the sort of thing that you might want to use to be able to represent to them the language choice beyond just maybe a text value, have it be based off of a flag, but various reasons why you might want to implement something like this in your own application. So hopefully you can take what you have learned and seen in here and apply it into your own bubble application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.